Okay, we've got a few people watching. Hey guys, welcome to the tutorial. Uh, it's really nice to have you guys here today. Uh, make a comment in the comment box if you hear something wrong. Just adjusting my volume here. Okay. Okay, so please uh, make some comments if you guys would like to see something special. I do have a packed hour of Photoshop. I'm going to show you guys how to make an overlay and an animation in Photoshop. We're going to do some fun stuff here. So like we're going to take your imagination and we're going to create beautiful designs and you don't even have to be brilliant to do it. I swear. Let's get to it. Goosebumps when I see that intro. Welcome to the I Like It channel, everybody. I am very excited for this week course here. Um, for those who are joining me today for the first time, I do have other tutorials that will explain a little bit more about um, PNGs and all that kind of stuff. So um, instead of just repeating uh, everything over again, just check out some of those old shows. Uh, lots of good stuff in there. Um, okay, so where do we start? Where do we start? Um, well, let me introduce myself. <laughs> I'm Corey Topolinky, and today I'm going to show you Photoshop. But before we do that, I just want to make sure you guys understand that, uh, you know, it's a bit of work involved in this. And all I ask for in return is for you guys to hit that subscribe button and um, make me very happy. So please, 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 please do that. Okay, uh, before we go into all the fun stuff here, uh, let's talk some shop here. Okay, because we just need to discuss graphic design and Canva and all those other things that are out there. And people are making their own stuff, and that's great. I love to see people making their own stuff. But, um, I mean, if you take a graphic designer, a well-trained designer on Photoshop and someone else uh, creating something on Canva who is not a trained designer, you really notice the difference. You really do. Um, there's so many different ways to create nowadays with these all these apps and Canva and all that. And, and it, it makes it really easy for people to create stuff and also very easy for people to make mistakes. So I just encourage everyone to keep working at things and uh, try to do some research on graphic design, the elements of design. Um, those are very important things you need to learn. So please, please, please guys, Google and YouTube tutorials on graphic design to understand topography, the colors, and that kind of stuff. Um, and what I really see a lot up to that is not very nice is when people um, and, and trust me, my intentions aren't to insult anybody. I don't want no one to get hurt, no one's feelings to get crushed. But when you take a photo of somebody and you use a, I know, like a Canva type of thing to cut people out, it's not always the best mask and it doesn't look very good. You have to adjust colors and stuff. If you don't do that kind of stuff, the photo will look not very nice. And doesn't make the overlay look professional. So we'll touch a little bit more on how to cut people out of a photo and add them into a overlay. Okay, so before we do that, though, before we do that, uh, I just want to go into the website here and show you guys some cool things, cool websites that you would probably love. I love them. This is the first one here. It's socialsizes.io. And this is a great way to create templates for Facebook, for Instagram, uh, for YouTube, TikTok. And they're the right size, the right, the right document size. Uh, for example, if I go to Facebook here, I can download like the, the Photoshop file. And there it is. It downloads down here. I open it up. And there I have all the different sizes of Facebook images, 
everything from the covers to the stories and what we, what you would post in uh, in Facebook news feeds uh, and you can tell here that the the resolution is all set for you uh, it's a great way for sure to um, make sure that the things that you're posting on social media is the right size so check out this wonderful site social sizes.io bookmark it you'll use it a lot okay so if you, people are looking for fonts fonts the number one place to get them for free the font everyone uses the font if you don't use it start using it there are many many fonts um the font is the king i think i use it all the time okay uh, another website i think you should check out if you are doing animations um, is motion array i do a monthly subscription for this i use a lot of their assets and um, i mean everything in here from uh, videos audio uh, sound effects and music uh, some templates that are for uh, after effects or adobe premiere uh, even the DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro, you have some templates for all that kind of stuff in here. So Motion Array, Ooh I love, love, love it. Uh, the next website I want to show you is Canva. Everyone knows Canva. Uh, super simple, you log in, sign up. You can use your Google account or your Facebook account to, to log in and it's pretty much free. There is a Canva Pro here for $16.99, which is more expensive than uh, Photoshop, by the way. But, you know, you get a bunch of stuff. Um, Canva. But this is the one I want to show you here today, and that is template.net. Te template.net. This is great. It's kind of like Canva, but it's just awesome i love it like here is the file for okay i'm going to log in first here i'm going to log in with my google account here i am now i'm logged in super easy i'm just going to scroll down and i'm going to check out the photoshop files i'll click on that and here you go you have a whole and the, these this pops up here you just click off it there you go uh, it's free, but you have to put up with the little things like that, but it's worth it. And again, here I am. I'm on this website. I'm going to go to, uh, let's go to, hmm, let's check out posters. And we'll, no, I'm going to go back here. Hang on. Um, cards, manners. Let's see y'all here. I'm looking for invites or holiday. Anyways, you see everything you see. I mean, there's, oh, there it is, invitations. We'll go here and I'll go to wedding. And there we go. We got a whole bunch of invites, uh, wedding themed, but the, what I love about this is the templates are Photoshop files. So for example, this, this one here will be my overlay today. Okay, guys. So I'm going to click on that and download now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just get past that. Close. one second here keeps asking me to buy now but I'm sorry hang on hang on let's try this one here download <laughs> okay hang on oh okay you see the ones that are free okay I see okay some are free and some you have to pay for but there are a lot of free ones you could just bypass all those ones that are uh that have a price tag on them so let's just find one that is free mm -mm -mm. 
just browsing through and like there's so many so many good stuff here's one let's try that one click on it and download now and there it is okay just move myself out of the way so there i am i was going to click on that little box down here and we're going to open up the four by six photoshop file awesome now we have this file up here and you notice that these flowers are their own layer and then we have this that's the layer there's layers so you can actually use this save it as a separate png and use it later okay so let's have fun with this so what i'm going to do now is create an overlay a four by six postcard overlay of one photo and let's say we'll do it for the mirror okay the mirror booth so i'm going to go to file new and there it is we're going to go 1200 by 1800 pixels 300 pixels per inch and we'll make sure that our background is transparent and we'll say okay now we have a, a four by six postcard canvas. Now I want to click back up here and go back to this thing that we have. And I want to bring these flowers right into here and drop off. There we go. We just place some flowers. And for now, I'm just going to put it there. We can go back again to this one. And let's, uh, let's grab these little ones too. Now bring them in here, drop them off. There they are. Size them a bit. Let's put these guys on the bottom. Okay. I'm going to click on this shape. And I'm going to create a background. We'll have it white for now. Maybe we'll change. Oops. We'll change that color to more of a champagne-y kind of color. There we go. And then we'll move that layer right to the bottom. Cool. Now, these flowers, maybe we can size them a bit more. And then we move it over here. And then we can duplicate it, remember? holding down the alt key and then clicking and dragging you can make another one there we go now i'm going to make another rectangle shape here it's going to be the exact same size again i show you all this in the other tutorials and then we can you know keeping its ratio you know instead of going like this keep that ratio and that's where my picture's gonna go. The photo booth picture. Right there. You can see it's white right now if I double click on that layer. And take the fill opacity out and do the knockout to deep. Now I have a transparent shape that I can move around. What some people do, I'll just turn this layer off. They take the background They'll rasterize the layer and they'll take this other tool here, this rectangle tool that can cut out and they'll go like this and they'll hit delete and they knock out a chunk of the background. Okay. Now the thing that is wrong with this though, is that you can't move that, that, that shape is cut out of the background. So you can't move it. So I'm going to control Z to unwind, to rewind, to undo. And then we're going to put that shape because now this shape, you can move around or you can turn it or you can make it smaller. When it's cut out of the background, you can't do any of that. So make sure you create the photo slot for the overlay its own layer and make sure it's the same size as the overlay 
And then when you size it, you know it's going to have that 4 by 6 to 2, 3 ratio that you need for the photo. Okay, now we have that layer here. I can select these flowers now and hold down my shift to select the other one and move it right to the top. Now it's kind of overhanging over top that picture there a bit. Love it. Let's go back to that invite that we downloaded and let's grab and let's grab uh, I was going to lock this layer so I can grab this stuff here. There we go. Let's highlight all this stuff and let's bring it into here. Okay. Okay, so we see that this text here has that uh, exclamation mark there. That means that uh, you don't have the font. So we're going to change the font to something we do have. Let's go with that for now. And then when I click on that corner, I can transform it however I want. Okay. Now this is its own layer here all by itself. So we can do whatever you want. We can turn it more, do whatever we want. Okay. So another thing I'm going to show you here is uh, what I've shown you in past uh, tutorials. When you click on something and you, you click on this three dot up here for the alignment and you go to the canvas selection. So it'll be aligned with the canvas. I can now make sure everything's center. For example, if it's over here, center or center that way. Okay, so that's that's a good way of knowing when, you know, if things are center. For example, this is over here. I hit center. Okay. So we're getting there. We're starting to have something. And remember, we downloaded this template off that website for free for free okay and then we brought it into Photoshop and now and and because we downloaded the Photoshop file we're able to like use these elements in I mean you're not even using this invite you can just use the flowers alone and and you know just download the template just for the flowers uh, but it, it's really simple here Okay, so I'm going to click on that. And that's this layer right here. I'm going to double click on it. And now we can change the layer styles. So I will go to the gradient, I guess. We'll go to gradient. And we'll pick one. I'll just go to the golds, oranges. Let's try that one. Or that one. Okay, we have a nice looking texture now, or a, a gradient layer on this now. We'll double click on it again. And maybe we'll add a little bevel, see what we did there. You know, just change, just fool around. And best way to learn, guys, is just to click buttons. See, what does that do? What does that do? So now I have a little bit of a bevel on it and remember when you use bevels and drop shadows and all that stuff little 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 tiny little bit not not overkill a little bit is better than a lot go back in this again and i'm going to hit that drop shadow i always start with default so i've reset the default and then i'll always turn it up full blast so i can see it and then I'll just angle it a little bit. Maybe simmer that down a bit. And when you're using a drop shadow, instead of using black, use something off the artboard itself. So I'm going to eye drop like this color here. And then pick one of the darker shades of that color. Instead of black, it's more interesting when it's following some type of color palette. I'll say OK and OK. Now we have, see how I'm going in and out? I see close and I pull back. Okay, so we have something special here. There we go. 
Now, I'm just going to put it here, and I'm going to hit center, so I can see center. Okay. I'm going to just duplicate that. And I'm going to change the text in this to the date. Let's say 12, 12, 2022. Okay. Then we'll size it and move it down here. Okay. And then again, I'm going to make sure it's center. There we go. I'm just going to move this out of the way so we can see this better. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you guys a little bit about the kerning thing here. Um, it's really important that you understand that you how to move uh, the letters in the word to kind of, you know, sometimes you have a font that, you know, the G might be too far over. Like right here, I, I would think that the G needs to come in a little bit more. And over up here, the, the R. See, it just seems further than that does. So I'm just going to click, double click on it, and I can highlight just the A. And then up here on the character, I can like bring things in a little closer. Okay. And I'm going to do that with the G here. So I'm going to highlight the O and bring that G in closer. And maybe the E. Let's bring in that R a little bit, just a little bit. Great. Okay. Now, as you can see, the drop shadow is kind of bothering me. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm I always changing things because I just, I'm always looking for a certain look. And if I'm not liking it, I keep changing. Don't accept what you have. Always be open for changes. Uh, so here, I'm just going to take that drop shadow like right, right down. And we'll copy that up to the top one. See, that drop shadow is much lighter now. It's still there to give that lift effect, but it's not overkill. Okay. This font, I'm going to change it. Let's go to maybe that one here. I'm going to go bolder. Okay. So let's say I want to move these these dots here, I don't like them on the bottom. I want to move them up. So I just highlight it and then I can come over here to the character settings and move it up. Maybe I want it to be right there in the middle. How about that one too? Boom. It just looks better, maybe. I like it. And then we'll make sure that's just a little bit smaller. And now we have a name. Now we're back to this box again. I'm just going to size it down a little smaller and we'll put it back. Or maybe you don't like that box at all and you just want to take it out and use something else. You know, like I said, if you're just downloading this template for free just for these flowers, why not? Okay, so now I'm back over here and maybe I want to put a frame. The fastest and easiest way to put a frame on there is to go here and put a stroke on it. And then maybe we'll change that color to something off the palette that we have here, maybe a little softer. Okay. Okay. So basically we made an overlay. Now, if you, if you were to buy this and you love it, but it is, you know, the wrong way is, you know, you maybe need a two photo or three, maybe it needs to be square. Maybe it needs to be um, portrait or landscape, you know, so it's easy to do. So I'm going to go up here again to file new. We'll change it for, to a landscape style, so 18 by 1200 pixels. Okay. Now we have a new artboard that is landscape. I'm going to come back in here now and just grab these flowers, bring them into here. Okay. Maybe I need some more. Just Alt 
and click and drag over. Maybe I got another one. Okay, come back in here. Let's grab that background. I'm going to control C for copy and control V for paste. There it is. Stretch it out so it fits on there better. It's a solid color, so I can do that. And then I'm going to put it to the back. Come back over here. Let's grab that now. Control C, Control V. Click on the corner. I can size it. Look what I did. I'm taking a one photo overlay. And in a matter of a couple minutes, I'm able to create a three photo overlay. Come back over here. Let's grab these flowers now. That and that. Control C, Control V. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then come back over here and let's grab that. Hold down the shift key and select that. Hold down the shift key and select that. Let me bring all three of them together into here. Drop it off. Okay, maybe we need to do a little bit of adjusting to make things fit better. So let's take that. Move it up. And take that and that maybe and just size it a little bit smaller. Select that and make that a little bit smaller. Maybe we'll change the shape a little bit. Done. That took me, what, three minutes to change it from a one photo to a three photo. File. New. We'll go 1600 by 1600 pixels. Now we have a square. Back in here, let's grab that background. Bring it in, drop it off. Okay. Come back in here. Let's grab those flowers. Let's grab two of them this time. Bring it over here. Like I'm just going, I'm just going quickly, you know. I'm just kind of showing you that it's it, it just takes practice. Like I kind of just, you know, zipping through it because I've done this, I do this every day. So, um, now that it's a square, I'm going to make sure that the photo is square. So I'll just make it the same size as the, over, or as the uh, canvas. And now when I size it down, it'll keep its square shape. I'll make sure that's underneath the flowers. So when I lift it up, some of the flowers will be under it, or on top of it, I mean. And then let's put that back down. There we go. Come back in here again. Let's grab these ones. Bring it into here. Okay. Come back here. Let's grab this. That. That. And this. Boom, boom. Bam. Right? Pretty easy, guys. Now I have a square template, a three-picture overlay, and a one-picture overlay, all from this Photoshop file that we downloaded from here. Pretty cool. Yeah, I guess Canva, you can kind of do that kind of stuff too and all that, but, you know, Photoshop, you know, Photoshop just, I just love it. It's it's great. It, you can do stuff so easily and move things around and... and you know, let's say, um, the, you know, these flowers here, I'll zoom in a little bit closer. You know, hitting control L for the levels, I can change the darkness of it. And control U, I can change how bright it is, how dull it is, I can change the color of it completely. Uh, there's lots of different ways, you know, if you just want to affect the flowers and not the leaves, uh, there's other ways of doing that, but that's, that's another day, but adjusting colors and all that kind of stuff. It's really cool. You can actually even click on that flowers and go into your, double click to go into the layer styles. Mm. 
one sec here. Click on it. There it is. I can go to uh, color overlay and we can change colors like this too. Okay. And not just the color, but you can change like, like the, uh, the blend mode too. You know, there's different modes, the blend modes that you can use. And you figure all this stuff out just by playing around with it. Sometimes your best creations are by accident. Okay. So let's cancel that just to put it back up here. Now we have overlays that we created from that. Now we're going to make a touch to start screen for the mirror booth that's animated and it's done in Photoshop. So it's pretty simple. Let's go to file new. This time we'll go 1080, 1920. That's the size of the TV that's inside the mirror. Okay. So there's our canvas for the mirror booth animation screen. Come back into here and let's grab that background. It's all very repetitive. Okay. Now, if you're a good boy or girl, you would actually name this. So you know, double click on the on the text here and you can change the name of the layer. So you kind of you know, when you have a lot of layers, sometimes if you don't, you know, name them, you, you get lost, right? So let's call this background. Okay. Let's come back into here again. Let's grab those flowers. Let's just grab one. Okay. I'm going to size it. And like that. Now let's grab these guys. Bring it into here. Okay. Put that one there. And let's put this one here. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to come back into here. Let's grab that, that, and that. Bring it into here. Drop it off. Okay, I'm going to use my, you know, these three layers are selected. So I'm going to make sure that they're all center and they are. Okay. So that is the touch to start screen. Uh, but it's not animated. How do you animate this? Very, very easy. Okay, very easy. So now we're going to open up a new panel. So we're going to go to window. And we're going to go to timeline. Now we create a timeline. Uh, a timeline is how long the clip is. And then you can control with, um, you know, when things come in and when things come out, when things are animated and how they're animated. <clears throat> so first thing we're going to do here is create a new video timeline. All the layers we have here are now in this timeline. Okay. I'm going to make the timeline just up here so we can see it better. So you can see that Karen and Roger is a layer. And then that thing, that shape thing's a layer. And so on, okay? Flowers. Okay. I'm going to click over here now. This little bar is like an option bar for the videos. Okay, and then I'm going to click on set time line frame rate. And by default, it's always 30, but we're going to change it to 25. 25 frames per second is easy for when you need a time triggered animation, you know, like a countdown, uh, you know. 25 is one second. That means 100 frames is four seconds, right? So it's just easier to create, you know, the time to be more accurate for the mirror trigger. 
I'll say okay. And at the moment, this is a five second animation. Okay, we can increase that simply by clicking on the layer and dragging it out. Now it's eight seconds. So we'll make it, we'll just, oops. Let's we'll drag them all out to be eight seconds. I can highlight all these layers at the same time and move them together. I guess not. Okay, now we have an eight second animation. The difference from Photoshop and other video editing software like after effects is it's not you know you know there's very little effects you can do um but when you're just building a, a basic touch to start screen uh you can photoshop is great and there's also little ways little tricks that you can uh, add special effects to and i will show you that okay now we'll start with this shape that's the text is on, okay? Before I do that, I just want to make sure I size that it's small. It's too big. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to the beginning of the time frame. Okay. I'm at the beginning and I click on that layer. And when I drop that arrow down, I'm able to change or you know click on these things here so i'm going to click on style so that it creates a little node here so it's telling me that at this point of the time that the style is doing that right and then if i go over here and i rotate it oh sorry 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 let me do that again do it again transform so I'm going back to the beginning hit transform and come over here and then when I rotate it and say okay so now if I go back to the beginning and I hit play I have an animation now I have this it's rotating just like I asked it to okay Okay, now I definitely don't want it to do that, but I just wanted to demonstrate how the animation works in Photoshop. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have at the two second mark, I want it to be there. I'll click on that. And then back to the beginning, I want it to be up off the screen. Okay. Now when I push play, this thing drops down. Okay. Now once it drops down, I'm going to Karen and Roger layer here, hit opacity. Okay. And then when I change the opacity up here to zero, it's gone. And then I'll say in this second and a half, it comes on turn it up I'll come back to the beginning things drops down and the text shows up okay now I'm going to do the same thing for the date okay there's the date right there and we'll say the opacity is at zero. And then right here, it turns back up. Okay, now we have an animation. Okay. Now this flower up here, okay. 
I'm going to drop that down now and hit transform. And then halfway through, it's just going to slightly move like that. And then over here, maybe it moves a little bit that way. Now we have like a little bit of motion. See, you can see there's a little bit of motion. You can see it's a little shaky right now, but it's not like that once it renders. But because, you know, Photoshop is not a video rendering type of program, but it does it. But it's meant for photos, right? And then, ta-da, and then that. And once it gets to the end, it repeats, it loops. Okay, so now these smaller flowers in the corner, let's say here, put it transform. And the other one, transform, okay. And then back here, we'll say this one is over here, and this one is over here. Now when we run this, at a certain time when we select, the flowers will pop in. Okay, so now we have a animation made in Photoshop. It can be a lot better. I'm just showing you some basics based on the overlay that we created and an invite that we downloaded for free. And in a matter of half hour, we made three overlays and an animation screen. Okay. What do you do now? Well, no, now when you're done, you just kind of come down here to this arrow down here at the bottom. I'm in the way. <laughs> Okay, so this little arrow thing down here, we click on that. And now we come, it comes up with this, uh, this menu here. Uh, it's, you name it, whatever you want. You select the folder you wanted to go into. Um, everything you see here is set the way it should be and hit render. Super, super easy. Okay. Now, you have an MP4. That's what, can't remember where I put it. <laughs> sec but but very very simple guys it's very very simple um you know use your creativity to you know do your own thing you know it takes sometimes it takes a little bit of an imagination to be creative of how things are you know brought into the scene and and whatnot but pretty much I just wanted to demonstrate that, again, we download something off the internet for free, and then we did all this stuff. Okay. Now we have a overlay, let's say, this one here. I'm done with the animation for now, so I'm just going to close this panel so we can just concentrate on the overlay. Now there is a request to put a photo with this overlay. Okay, so we're just going to um, add a photo. And the client provided us with a photo like this. So I'm going to bring it into Photoshop. Okay, so we have a beautiful photo here. Okay. Now, what do we do with that? Now, how are we going to add that? Okay, it's pretty simple. We kind of touched a little bit about uh, how to add photos. Um, and, um, you know, it's 
there's so many different ways of doing this, guys. And I even showed you a few websites that removes background. But uh, last time I showed you, we just cut it out with an eraser tool, pretty much. We used certain tools. I'm going to rasterize that layer. We use certain tools like this lasso to here and we're able to like go around and take you know chunks out of the picture right uh, I mean this is you know you can get the same result doing this as you oops as you can uh, doing it other ways too right I mean this takes longer and sometimes it's not, you know, exactly the results you want. But, I mean, we're just cutting them out. And then going in with my eraser tool. And, you know, you can erase part of it and, you know, fine-tune it. You know? Uh, the other option that we did, I was going to control Z to undo all that. Next thing here is we're going to do... A mask okay um, so we don't get confused I'm just gonna start with a new artboard here okay where is she where are you there they are so I'm gonna bring them into that new artboard we made there they are okay just size it up a bit where you want it Okay, now once I have this layer highlighted like I do now, I'm going to go to select and we're going to subject. Now Photoshop is going to do their, you know, it's brain AI thing here. And it's going to say, okay, this is what the subject is. And, you know, it's pretty close. Okay, now I can control X to cut them out. And let's turn that layer off. Now, Control V to paste them. There they are. Okay. Now, that's a that's a pretty destructive way of doing it. Okay. You, you, there's it, elim it eliminates you to you know edit further. Okay. So I'm going to Control Z, Control Z. Okay. So instead of cutting them out. I'm going to go down here and select this button down here. Oops. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this button down here. There we go. What we did is we created a mask. And I can turn the mask on and off. Just, you know, so you can see like the... You know, the background is still there. But we just masked it off. Okay. So what's cool about that is now I can use my brush tool, which is right here, my brush tool. And I'm on the mask. So when you're in the mask mode, I'm able to remove with the black and if I switch over to white, it brings back. Okay. So this is handy because you can like really like fine tune it and you're not destroying the photo like, you know, point of no return here. I can hit X on my keyboard, which does the back and forth. See black, white, black, white. And I'm able to like just go in here and mask off what I want. And if I want, I can reverse it, X, and bring some back, X. Okay. Uh, there are some really fine tools for like hair, but that's another day. I'm just showing you some basic stuff here. So I'm just gonna cut out like that. Let's clean up that edge right there. Here we go. 
Oh, see, I took some of his arm off, maybe, so let's just bring some of that back. Here we go. X. There we go. Now around his ear, that's a little funny thing going on there. Let's clean that up. Give him a haircut. There we go. And let's kind of clean up a little bit over here. There we go. We got a beautiful couple cut out, masked out. Okay, again, if I put the mask back on, I'll take it out. Put it in, take it out. That's awesome. Now, I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to fine tune, you know, sometimes the this, in this case, the photo is really good. But sometimes it's not a very good picture, like the contrast or something, you know, the color's off or, or it's too bright or whatever. Control L, my levels. Just kind of bring it a little bit darker, it makes it more rich. And then control U for my saturation hue. There we go. Now I'm going to click on that layer and bring them back over to that overlay. Drop them off. Now I have them on the overlay. Now I can size them and position them. How cute is that? Now, a mistake a lot of people make, I see a lot, a lot guys is people put a photo on there and they think it's not balanced because they're there and there's nothing over here. So what they do is they they highlight it, they bring it over, flip it around, transform, flip, and they put two of them on there. Don't do that. I see it all the time. People putting two photos of the same person, like it's the same image. Uh, don't do that, guys. Okay. There's other ways of creating balance. And another thing I see a lot, too, is people add a photo, and it's like this. <laughs> like, what's the purpose? What's the purpose of putting a stamp on there? You know, if you're going to cut out and put a photo of the wedding couple on an overlay, and you and you put it on there like that, it's kind of humorous in a way, you know, in a bad way. <laughs> Let's make them nice. It's okay if they're over top the photo a bit, you know, and because they're on this side now, you don't need that flower there. And you probably don't need that one either. And maybe this, you can stretch out like that. I'm just playing around with some ideas here, guys. Okay. Now we can take the names, the name and the date, and put it right here now. Now, now we have some kind of balance without having to duplicate the picture. And I even make the middle a bit bigger. Why not? Okay. So there we added a photo to the overlay. Again, I can click and drag this over to here. Push them right to the top, size it out. And now you have an animation screen. Move that up now. Now you have an animation screen with the picture of the, of the couple. And that's a really nice photo, guys. Really nice. Now, sometimes you don't get a good photo. Try to get one, guys. Talk to your client and say you need it at, you know, at least the same size, 1,200 by 1,800 at least. Um, but there are ways of correcting it. Um, you know, for example, we can go to the... Uh, Filter, oh, excuse me. I'm gonna select that layer, filter, 
And we'll hit that one there. Neural filters. Okay, we're going to zoom in. And here we can do some skin smoothing. Add more. Add more smoothness. And again, if you overkill it, sometimes it will distort the image. So you have to be really careful. Okay. Also, there's brushes. So make sure that layer is selected. And this, you know, she's, you know, right here we can correct that there. So we're going to go to this tool here. It's called the healing tool. And we're able to just kind of like touch up a little bit. Just a little bit. Look at that. Okay. Just an example of how you can touch up photos. Um, I see the worst cuts and I'm just. You know, I just want to scream sometimes when I see things. People don't take the time. You know, because of things like Canva and all that stuff, people are doing things on their own now without any kind of knowledge on, on graphic design and and correction of, of photos and, and how to edit photos when they're wrong. You don't have to go to school. I went to school, okay? But you don't need to go to school to learn graphic design. It's just an hour of watching some YouTube videos here, or, uh, read, read some, read some, uh, some books on it and, 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 and just pick up the basic stuff. Cause you're not, you're not designing magazine covers and stuff. You're designing an overlay for your photo booth business. And you don't need to know everything about graphic design. You just need to know the basic rules, the basic rules, guys, check it out, Google it, watch it. And watch some tutorials, some really good people out there teaching some good stuff for free. There we go. So today, we went on to that website. And downloaded that. And there's lots of, lots of different stuff here, guys. You know, look for the ones that say free. <coughs> I think I think you can even like uh, change the uh, settings so it doesn't show you the stuff that's uh, that costs money. But even if you do come across a design and it, and it does cost money, why not? Why not spend four dollars and get the design you want? You know, people who design stuff and uh, you know make a dollar or two uh, really appreciate it. And the last thing you want to do is take someone's design and and send it to your, your guy and say, can you make this for me? You know, um, why not just buy it? You know, I, I would, I would be happy if you bought it from me. Okay. So that is pretty much what I'm doing today for, uh, the tutorial. Uh, I really hope you guys uh, learned something. Uh, also remember that I do, I do have a website too. I like it. And in the description, there is a link where you can get 110 overlays with Photoshop files for a really super, super duper discount. So click on that link and uh, help out a brother and buy some overlays. That'd be much appreciated. Uh, once again, as the social sizes, make sure you guys check that out because it gives you all the right uh, dimensions and all the right uh, resolutions and stuff like that for all these different social media sites. The font is the place to go for your fonts. There are thousands and thousands of fonts. And if you can't find the one that you're looking for, you'll find something really, really close to it right here on the font. Of course, motion array. I'm going to touch more on that next week when I do an animation with uh, effects in Photoshop with assets from this site. Canva, I don't really want to do much on Canva because it's kind of, I'm just not a big fan of Canva. Um, I just, um, I guess I'm kind of a, a fan, but I'm not really, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but it's a love hate relationship. Um, but Canva is here and it's here to stay and it's just going to get better and better. So I have to kind of adjust and, and start looking at it. But, um, Canva is really good if you're 
if you're out of time, if you get a last minute thing and you need to do something quick, Canva. But this one here, the template site, I mean, I just showed you how easy it was to download something. Uh, there's different things like uh, everything from Thanksgiving and weddings to baby showers, uh, baby reveals, uh, funerals. <laughs> and even if it's, you know, like this template right here, you don't really like anything on it except for those flowers. Why not just download it and grab the flowers off it? You know, like, for example, this that has that nice corner border. Why not download it just for that? You know, it's free here. Uh, that's a really nice image of some like a teapot and, and coffee cups that might be really hard to find on a PNG tree or something. Right. So, you know, take a look at the site and uh, um, I'm sure you'll you'll fall in love with it, too. Um, and that is it. I'm going to check and make sure I don't have any comments here. Okay. Okay, guys. So, um, really, I mean, I, I, it's really easy, right? To take a one photo and make it into a three photo or make it portrait or landscape. Um, but if there's anything in specific that you guys would like to see, uh, just message me or, or email me and I'll make sure to squeeze that into my tutorial because I do want to help you guys uh, who are stuck on something. So just get back to me and I'll make sure I, I squeeze the next week. Uh, until then, uh, God bless and God bless Ukraine.